Okay, last time we come to uh, the magnetic circuit, right? The magnetic circuit, right? So uh, this type of circuit, right? The force to drive the magnetic, we call the magnetomotive force, right? Magnetomotive force or MMF to drive the flux, right? The magnetomotive force is uh, maybe uh, similar to voltage in electric circuit and the flux is similar to current and the circuit will have the reluctant right the reluctant which is similar to resistance in the electric circuit right so we uh, can write down the relation by uh, the magnetomotive force equal to flux and the reluctant right of the circuit okay you remember this and the reluctant is the uh, depending on the uh, permeability of the material right and the cross-sectional area the reluctant is uh, L divided by permeability and the cross-sectional area like this right and you usually we uh, we use mu r into mu zero right this is for free space right mu of free space permeability of free space and mu r if mu r is one is mean it is the material is like just like free space right like an air for example air is we use mu r is one it's the same value with free space it means that it's just the core, right? With the air, right? Air core. The core is air, right? And if the core is not the air, it's the flow magnetic. Mu may be, the mu R could be very high, okay? Higher than one. It's 1,000, okay, for example, or 10,000, for example, right? And it's still the cost. What means if mu is very high, the reluctant is low, right? Reluctant is low, right? And then uh, the flux can flow easier, right? And if you flow in this material, it's not leak to the air, right? But in practice, some flux, some flux will leak, some flux will leak to the air, okay? And then we uh, we can form the magnetic circuit, right? For for example, with this, uh, this. Uh, this magnetic circuit, we can uh, write down the equivalent circuit like this, right? And this is the reluctant, and this is the uh, magnetomotive force. And the magnetomotive force can be computed by the number of coil multiplied with the current flow with that coil, right? Like this, uh, if we uh, supply the current 0 0.1 amp, to n turn right it's n into i right how many number of turn uh, 500 turn right so uh, the four the mag magnetomotive float is 0 0.1 by 500 it's 50 right ampere turn right here 50 ampere turn we can have this value so we can compute the flux flow in this circuit right by this relation Now we know reluctant and we know magnetomotive force, right? And we can compute flux. And this is the reluctant. We can compute the reluctant by L divided by mu A. And this material have mu R of 1000, right? Here. The material have mu R of 1000. And if we have many uh, uh, many part of circuit, we can uh, form this circuit, right? Like this. So we compute the reluctant of each part, right? The reluctant of each part by. L divided by mu R, mu zero and A, right? We have R, this is R1 
reluctant one of this pass, right? Reluctant one. Reluctant two. Reluctant three. Four. Six. Seven, right? Yeah, like this. By mu L, uh, L divided by mu A, right? And this is the answer, right? You can combine these three reluctant together and parallel with this reluctant and then combine it with this and R1 also, right? You just uh, group the reluctant. This is, you can add it in uh, silly form, right? And then parallel with this reluctant, and then you uh, add uh, the equivalent reluctant with R1, R2, and R6, right? Here. Okay. I think you uh, can try to do this, right? For your understanding and, and to do homework. So, and this is the result. Yeah. Okay. This is the result. Okay. And then you can combine these three together, right? And this is the result of the reluctant, right? Total equivalent reluctant. Okay, for you to check the answer, right? After you do this, check the answer. Okay. So you need to calculate the range, right? Of this part. How much is range? How much is range? How much is range? How much is range, right? Okay, and for A, the area, the area is uh, deep, deep with one centimeter, right? One centimeter. 1 and 2 cm, right? So, A is 1 by 2 cm square, right? Okay. So, don't forget uh, the uh, don't forget the unit of area and length into meter, right? Into meter. This is square meter and this is in meter. Okay? Don't forget to change the unit. Okay? Because uh, it according to the permeability constant. Okay? Okay. Then, uh, in many in many applications of uh, magnetic circuit, we usually have uh, an air gap like this. Here. This is an example of the magnetic circuit with air gap. How to analyze this type of magnetic circuit? So we can uh, calculate the reluctance of this part which is R1, right, reluctant 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, right, and this is 5, and the reluctant of the air gap, RG, R of the air gap, and usually the reluctant of the air gap is very high because mu r equal to 1 if this is free space right the free space we calculate the reluctant by this formula right r1 is l1 divided by mu r mu 0 and a right we have this area r2 similarly to r2 we use this l2 for the range l3 is here right l4 is here L5 is here, right? Like this. Okay. And RG is very small L here. This is the, we use delta. Delta for this range, right? Delta for this range. Delta is L, is L of, of air gap, right? Air gap. The range of air gap. And AG. AG is usually similar to A, right? Similar to A. 
but I will talk later. And then mu zero. Right? And mu zero is, is just one. And for example, if we use permaloy for this material, what happened? R1, R2, R3, R4, R5 is very low, right? Because this value is very high. When mu r is very high, right? Okay. When mu r is very high, the reluctance of very low is very low, so and only r t is uh, uh, will uh, dominance, right? Of this circuit, for example, right? And then we can uh, rewrite this uh, magnetic circuit into this equivalent circuit. Okay. And we can calculate this value. difficult to calculate, right? Okay, anyway. <coughs> this is some uh, structure of this magnetic circuit, right? Compute the equivalently lactan of magnetic circuit, right? And the flux density established in the bottom bar of the structure. Okay, flux density. Uh, one thing I, I would like to, to tell you, and maybe at this moment, uh, what is AG in this case? We can approximate. Is AG is equal to A? Because in practice, the flux flow here, when the flux flow to this path, there is, is some this shape is come out like this. So AG, AG is higher than A. Okay, it's high, a little bit higher than A. But uh, we can solve by A G approximately equal to A in our calculation. Okay, approximately. Okay. So how to can how to calculate this magnetic circuit, right? So yeah. Okay, like this. In this case, right? We have the Flinging effect, we call this as flinging effect at the air gap. Flinging effect, but uh, we can approximate that is uh, just move in straight line. Okay, move in straight line. Okay. So take to calculate this uh, circuit, right? So we have uh, mu r is ten thousand. And N is 100 turn, I is 1 ampere. So the magnetomotive force is 1000 in 2 watt. So it's 100. Oh, sorry, 100 in 2 watt is 100 ampere turn, right? 100 ampere turn. Then we get the mean part, right? The mean part of this. Uh, if I draw. This will be this pass is L1, right? For L1. This is uh, reluctant one. Reluctant three. Reluctant two, right? And this is air gap, right? And this is the reluctant four, right? We have this is uh, air gap, reluctant of air gap one and two, right? This side and this side. So this is our magnetic circuit, right? Equivalent circuit. So in this case, we uh, the part range is L1, L2, L1, L3, L4, L5, L5 and A cap plus A cap, right? Okay. Okay. And we have uh, with this, uh, let's see, it's the same. So this is the same. Okay. <coughs> One uh, 
the range one and two and three, right? This is range one and two and three, and the range of the bar is here. Range of the bar L four. L5 and L6 is the A gap. L5 and L6. L4 plus L5 and L6, right? It's approximately L4. We use L4, right? For this part, right? This part. And a very small part here we neglect, right? Here and here. And we have air gap. LG is here. L1, L2, L3 is LU, upper. Uh, upper bar and the lower bar and the bar. this is the bar okay u shape of the u shape yeah l u is the, the range of u shape right and l bar is the range of the bar right in fact the magnetic flow like this right this is very small part very small part here we neglect we neglect l5 and l6 right here approximate to L4 okay you can add this value also add this value we use this value. and it's very small this part is 0 0.005 0 0 divided by 2 right this. Okay. so we use the mean part right to can create. Then we get the reluctant of U U chef and the bar, right? And the air gap, right? Then we can create the reluctant, right? Okay. Okay. The R of the U chef reluctant of U chef is L divided by mu of U chef A, right? L is 0 0.18 and the mu is this value, right? And this is A. And the bar for the bar is uh, the range is 0 0.09, right? And then uh, this is the mu value and this is A, right? So in this case, uh, we uh, calculate the effect of flinging effect right here, right? It's the area of the uh, area of the air gap part, right? The area of the air gap part, right? We calculate it by 0 0.01 meter plus the range of air gap square. In this case, range of air gap square area right we plus air gap and the range of air gap square here with this value and sometimes we can just approximate right this is 0 0.00015625 0 right this value but the air gap in fact the air gap is 0 0.00001 right we can maybe we can approximate to this value. Okay, just approximate. If we not uh, consider the shrinking effect, okay. okay, we use this value instead. Okay. okay, anyway, in this case, we use this value yeah. uh, of the air gap. Yeah. Yes, air gap. And then we get this. Okay. Okay then. Yeah, this is some uh, mistyping here. Yeah. Okay. This is mis mistyping. Okay. The total reluctant would be four multiplied by ten power seven and by ten per variable. So we can see that the Total reluctant is very close to the reluctant of the air gap. Why? 
because the reluctance of air gap usually very dominant, right? Dominate the circuit, right? The reluctance of the uh, furlough material parts is very really low. Uh, it's very really low. And, but in this part, uh, it's very high, right? And it's higher approximately 10,000 pounds, right? In 10,000 pounds. Even this part is longer, right? The reluctance of the air gap here. So we can see that the reluctance of the air gap is 3.98 multiplied with 10 power 7, but total reluctance is 4, right? It's very close to the reluctance of the air gap, right? It's dominate, right? This part is very small comparing to it's very small comparing to the reluctance of the air gap. The reluctance of the bar is very low comparing to the reluctance of the air gap, right? Sometimes we just use the reluctance of air gap in calculation, right? It's fine to use, right? And when we calculate the flux flow, we can just use the reluctance of the air gap as well, okay? The air gap, yeah. I think this is also mistyping, right? It should be 3.98, right? This is mistyping. Okay, and we get this. Please check this value. Okay, please check this value. I'm not sure. Maybe it should be 3.92 multiplied by 6 It should be this value, right? This is this is incorrect again, right? It should be thirty nine point two, right? Okay. Okay. Anyway, the uh, calculation method is is correct, right? But maybe some mistyping. Okay. Okay, then if we have this type of circuit, right, we know that the reluctance of air gap is very high comparing to the reluctance of furlough material, right? So we can use uh, only air gap, reluctance of air gap in our calculation, like this. Okay, like this, right? So in this case, if we use mu very high value, right? Mu of this material is very high. It's result to because reluctance is calculated by L divided by mu A, right? If mu is very high, reluctance is very low, right? But for the air gap, mu is very low, right? Permeability is very low. This is uh, that's why we can just approximate to the air gap area in our calculation okay so this should be your homework number five right number five okay so what should be the due date of this homework this may be after new year right okay so maybe submission date it Six of January should be so. I will announce in the, in the Facebook, right? Okay. I think I, I can uh, talk about transformer, okay? So, uh, another one application of the magnetic circuit that we use in the form of transformer, 
the transformer view have two coil, right? For single phase transformer, we have two coil, right? In uh, in theory, you we usually draw the transformer in this form, right? Okay, we turn the coil in the furlough material. This is furlough material, right? And we have two coil, right? And we call the one coil as primary. Primary. Another one is secondary coil. Secondary coil. And if we apply the alternative current or AC circuit voltage into primary side, we can get the voltage in the secondary side, right? And this relation is uh, the flux change of the flux, the change of flux in uh, produces by primary, right? V1 is N1 D5 by DT, and the flux will uh, link to the secondary coil, the secondary coil, and then it will produce V2, right? D5 by DT, this is the same value, right? This is the same value, and what we get is V1 divided by V2 equal to N1 divided by N2. With this, Theory, we can step up or step down voltage, right? Okay, we can step up or step down voltage. Okay, for example, if we have N1 is, uh, for example, 100 and N2 is 200, right? It means that we, uh, if we apply V1 by 220 volt, what happened to this side? It would be V1 divided by V2 equal to N1 divided by N2. What happened to uh, V1 is 220 divided by V2 equal to 100 divided by 200, right? Then we get V2 as 224 volt, right? This is step up transformer because it is step up transformer. We can step down the voltage also, right? We step up, step down, step down voltage also, right? For example, if this side is 200, this side is 100, what happened? The voltage will decreases by half, right? Decrease by half. The 220 volt will get 1101 in this side, right? And this transformer in my hand is uh, uh, step down from can step down from 220 volt to 15 volt, okay, 15 volt. And transformer we call non-rotating machine, okay, electric and uh, from electric to magnetic and come to electric, okay, then come back to electric. Okay, we use transformer for voltage level changing like this, right? This is the transformer relation. Okay. And in contrast to the voltage, the current will uh, have the relation in this form, right? In this form. This side we call primary winding and this side we call secondary winding. It's a magnetic flux here. Okay. And primary voltage, primary current. This is the relation of the transformer. And uh, <coughs> for example, if we have the current in this side, I1, and uh, the current, uh, I2 can be computed by this equation, right? If we know I1 from N1 and N2, right? We get the result of I1. Uh, let's see some example. So this uh, N1 may be 200 and N2 is 1 turn, right? This is 200 turn, this is 100 turn, like this. The voltage is 220, what is V2? V2 would be 110 volt, right? And if the current is 10 ampere, what is I2? It will be 
in this relation, right? I two will be in opposite with V, right? I two will be twenty ampere. Okay, yeah. Because uh, two hundred into ten equal to one hundred into I two, right? And I two, then I two is twenty ampere. Okay. You can see this is the uh, po uh, power uh, energy conservation or power conservation. The power of primary side equal to the power in secondary side, right? Power on primary side is V1 I1 is 2, 2200 VA, right? Uh, S, right? And S2 is V2 I2 is also 2200 VA, right? It's transfer the same power, right? But different voltage and different current, right? The lower voltage, we need a higher current. Because the transformer change the voltage, right? It's changed to lower voltage. So to supply to the load, we transfer the same power. When the voltage is lower, it's required higher current, right? In this case, right? So the current and voltage in this relation. So from this relation, we can form this equation. And this is the impedance on primary and is impedance on secondary. It means that we can transfer the impedance to secondary side. We can transfer to equivalent circuit. Okay. But anyway, I may not go to very deep detail on this. Okay. And this is uh, an example of a uh, single phase transformer. We can have core type like this. Primary and secondary are is separate. And we can have uh, gel type. Gel type, they call in the form of EI core. EI like this. And then we turn the core into the bobbin. We call the bobbin. This is the, I will, I will pass to you. It's a plastic. More, right? And then we uh, put the primary and secondary to the same core, right? With, with some insulation and we put it into the uh, core, right? And then we put the eye area. So we call this tie of transformable as EI core. So this is EI core, right? The primary and secondary are in the same form, right? This is also transformer, right? And this is uh, chain to 20 to 15 volt, and this is primary and secondary, right? Primary, secondary, like this, right? In the same core, right? And this is also in the same form. You can pass to your friend. And this is also, but I remove the enclosure. And uh, why they use the core as tin pit? Very tin pit here. Very tin pit here. And we put the tin pit. Many pit. So, because we try to reduce the loss in the core, right? The loss in the core will be due with this thin pair. Okay. And this is a large three-phase transformer. It's a large three-phase transformer. We can have three-phase transformer like this, the EI core also. And usually we put it in the insulation oil with the tank. I think you have ever seen this tank, right? In Maybe in the tower pole, right? In the tower pole, maybe beside the building, in some building, right? 
This building also have the transformer, right? And the near car park, right? Maybe this side. Near car view, right? In, when you pass the front of building, you will see the transformer in your right hand. Okay? Have you ever noticed that? Right? This type of transformer, right? To supply the uh, electricity to the building. And we use transformer in many parts of electric power system and in many parts of equipment to step up and step down voltage, right? Okay, to transform high to low, low to high. Even in small circuit, in very small circuit and also in the large circuit, right? Uh, and usually we use the transformer to step down, right? to step up here, step up from power station. This is a generator because the generator will produce the voltage not very high, right? Not very high. So for example, maybe at 20 kV, right? And we step up to transfer the, uh, the with higher voltage. So we, we use high voltage to reduce the current flow in the reduce the current flow in the transmission line. Okay? So the higher voltage is mean the lower current, right? Lower current. This is we step up for lower current, right? So then we use smaller wire, right? We use smaller wire. Then when we supply the electricity close to the load, right? We step down. We step down. And then in the distribution area, we step down again, right? And we get, uh, for high voltage, maybe we, uh, we use 115 kV to 30 kV kilowatt 500 kV 500,000 watt right okay and then from about this area maybe 22 kV right 22 kV to the industrial park they will have transformer again right so this maybe 22 kV but to household, we step down again. 380 volt or 220 volt, right? And then in industry or in building, we step down again. 380 volt, 220 volt. So there is a lot of transformer use, right? In electrical system, right? In electrical system. But uh, what I show you is very, very small one, right? Very small one, right? Maybe we use in power supply, right? Power supply. So if you put 220 volt in primary side, you will get 15 volt in secondary side. Okay, for transform. Okay. Okay, for small transformer, right? We use in many circuit like this, right? Those transformer we use in many circuit like this, right? In this circuit. Okay. Okay. Let's see some example of the transformer, right? So if we have the transformer, two twenty volt by four eighty volt, forty eight kVA, right? Uh, assume it's ideal transformer. Ideal transformer means no loss. Okay, it's ideal transformer. What is the ideal transformer? Is the transformer that we can compute by V1 divided by V2 equal N1 divided by N2 and I1 N1 equal to I2 N2. Okay, like this. Okay. So N1 divided by N2 is this value, right? N1 divided by V. 
So in this case, they just consider this is N1 and this is N2. So we can switch primary and secondary, it's depending on us, right? Yeah. So N1 by N2, in this case, is alpha. Yeah. This is. So if the transformer specification is 48 kVA, what happened? 48 kVA. It means that the current, right, the first current on 4, 480 volt, the current at 480 volt side would be 48 kVA divided by 480 volt is 100 ampere, right? Yeah. The current, for example, if this is 480 volt, and this is 120 volt side, we supply 480 volt here, we will get 120 volt here, right? Okay. And what is the current, maximum current of this side? Because uh, the maximum current of this side, what is maximum current of this side? This transformer can, uh, can supply 48 kVA. It means that the maximum current is 48 kVA. KVA divided by 480 volt, right? Current I1. And then if you can create I2, is this voltage 48 KVA divided by 120 volt for I2, okay? You can see the wire of that transformer. The higher voltage, the smaller wire because it's supply smaller current, right? Smaller current, right? The higher voltage, smaller wire, right? Is that right? Because the current is smaller, right? So the current is one, a uh, 4,000 ampere from this side. I is 4,000 maximum. And I from this side is 100 amp maximum. Okay, this is the capacity of the transformer, right? Here. Yeah. So in the low, low voltage side, they can supply higher current usually, right? With the same, uh, same rate, rated, rated value, right? We call this is the rated value. Yeah. Okay, and this is the uh, ideal transformer, ideal transformer. Okay. Right, you want to see this again, the small, have you noticed that the small, smaller voltage, it's a higher wire, right? Higher current, if you want to get the passes back from it, this side. Okay. <coughs> Okay. Maybe you would like to see again. Right? The Y is different side. Okay, this is ideal transformer, but in practice, the transformer will have many laws, right? For example, the flux cross between primary and secondary is uh, is not all right. It's say some leak. We call leakage flux. Here is the leakage flux, and we also have the uh, resistance, right? Resistance of the wire. Usually we have resistance of the wire, right? Even it's very low, but the resistance is there, right? Right. There is no zero resistance for any material. No zero resistance for any material, right? 
the resistance is there. And uh, in ideal case, we neglect this resistance. And also, the lactate is there, right? And there is the eddy current, and so it's many loss in the core loss. Core loss and winding loss. So there are core loss, the loss in the core, and the loss in the Y. Core and Y. Core loss and winding loss. Okay. So for power electrical engineer, we can calculate this loss, okay? But uh, I will uh, skip this part for you. Eh? This part I will not go into detail, right? So if you interested in how to calculate the loss in transformer, you can go into this slide, okay? And you or you can ask me to explain to you, okay? So this is uh, I will pass this. I will pass this topic, and there is no this homework for you, not required. Okay, happy. Okay. So this topic I skip right for transformer equivalent circuit, right? Transformer equivalent circuit. Okay. It's we will not talk about this part. I think it's too deep for you. Okay? Even electrical engineer, they study third term. Okay. Uh, the last topic of this slide is the force in the magnetic structure. Okay. So, when we apply the uh, magnetic circuit that we have talked, right, we use this formula right equal to flux into the lactate okay and the flux is the uh, as a function of i and the reluctant as a function of x yeah so we can compute the force applied to the material the force applied here the force applied here right this is if this pass is movable, it will move. It will move, right? When you put the magnetic close to the uh, fellow magnetic materials like ion, it will move, right? If the force is there, right? If you put the uh, if you put the magnetic close to some fellow magnetic material, right? The, the, you can feel the force, right? Also, why the material will move, right? That material will move, yeah, right? And it can be calculated by this equation. It's the flux square. And flux, we compute flux by this. And dr by, uh, drx by dx. Okay? So, if we would like to calculate the current required to generate the given force, we can use the Method. Okay. And with this theory, we can uh, form many equipment in many devices in the in the uh, electrical circuit or control system. For example, this is we call magnetic contactor. Magnetic contactor. If we supply the current to the coil, the coil is inside. If we supply the current in the coil, it will take uh, the movement of this contact. Okay? The contact will close and we switch this, uh, we can switch on the motor or the equipment, right? T fade, this is fade A, B, C, this T fade. It will, if we supply the current, it will switch on. Okay? Instead of on the circuit breaker, we just push the button, right? We push the button and the current flow to this coil and it will take move of this part, okay? This we call magnetic circuit, right? And we use in many, many 
industrial electrical system. Okay. This is also uh, the application of magnet, uh, magnetic circuit, right? The contact is there. The contact is there. So if we supply the current to the coil, the contact will close or open. It will move the contact and we use the contact okay, from this pin. Okay, this is a control for control circuit, but uh, I have no example, right? In fact, if I have some power supply, I can show you the movement of the contact. Okay, but I have no power supply here. Okay. This is also the type of contact. You can see the contact inside and the coil inside, contact and coil. The coil will move the contact, okay? Like this. This we call relay. This is relay circuit. And, uh, it's work like this. Uh, if we put the contact here, right? And the contact here, right? And this is, the contact will close, right? Like this. And with, if we supply the current here, we can move this contact, right? We call this uh, as relay, right? Or magnetic contactor. Okay. Okay. And this is the uh, example for calculation. Okay. We come back here, and this is the this is some application of electromechanical application, right? This is the magnetic contactor, and this is relay. Or we can use this in solenoid valve to move the valve, to move the valve, right? This is the, right? And this is the uh, structure of relay, the contact is here. You move the contact here. And this is the structure of solenoid wow. It move this uh, wow up and down to close and open the water flow right here. Okay. Okay. So I maybe explain uh, this example very fast, right? Just how to calculate. In theory, right? Okay, from this figure, from this figure, okay, uh, we have the information the number of coil is 500 turn, right? Mu of Free space is 4 pi by 10 power minus 7, right? Mu R of the material used is 10 power 4, right? And the air gap is 0 0.5 meter here. Yeah. Air gap is 0 0.5 meter here. Yeah. Okay. And the magnetic path is the range L1 is 0 0.6, L2 is 0 0.3, air gap cross section area is this way. The match of the load is 5 kg and G is 9.8, right? We can use this equation to form, right? Or if we are with this equation to form, can create the force, yeah, right? So R is R of furrow material and R of the air gap. R of furrow material is here, right? L1 and L2. R of air gap is here. Right? Because mu is 1. And the, 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 the range is x here, right? So we substitute into this uh, equation. The flux is the uh, magnet, magnetomotive force divided by the lactan, like this. Okay? So, QR by QX, DR by DX here, right? DR by DX, we just uh, make a derivative of this, right? We make derivative of this by DX and X here, right? It's 2 divided by mu A, right? Because this becomes 0. D by DX, we, we have 2 divided by mu A, right? Then the force is equal to flux square divided by 2 dr by dx. We substitute this into, right? Here. 
flux square. So flux square is there. Okay, we get this result. And then F max is here, right? So to move this bar, right? To move to force to this bar, uh, the weight of this bar is F gravity, right? F gravity is 98 Newton, right? And this is the force of the magnetic field. So finally, we put this value together and we calculate for I, right? This is the minimum current to lift up this bar, right? And then we substitute the known value here. Then we get the current of 225 amp ampere, right? Okay. And then after that, when is hold the current until x equal to zero, if x equal to zero, this is the magnetic circuit here, it's just like this, right? Equal to F cavity, right? Then I is just 0 0.0459 This means that uh, at the beginning, we require a very high current, right, to lift up this bar. And when the bar is touched to this area, the current requires very small. Okay, it's smaller. Okay. And another application of electromagnetic uh, circuit is motor and generator. And we will talk in uh, the next slide, right? For the next slide, we talk about this. So I think we have some break here.